bloody hell. If I want to be a little bit more efficient with it comes to time traveling and using game portals to get from more from different worlds, I might need to go back to the drawing board to actually understand how they work. Oh, I didn't see you guys there. Just give me a sec. Ah, greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Or should I say my fellow time travelers? Welcome back to another episode of Planetary's Throwback. I, your host, Planetary, your fellow time traveling gamer, taking you guys throughout time and space to look at the awesome modern day games all the way back to the good old classic retro games to see which one is good, which one is bad, and also which one is in the middle. <laughs> oh boy, looks like we're traveling back to 1999 once more. Man, I might as well change the show name to Planetary's Travelling Back to 1999. <laughs> to look back at our well-known Namcorn mascot transitioning from 2D to 3D, our yellow circle dot chomper fruit collector ghost ass kicker Pac-Man in his first debut in 3D and also on the PlayStation 1 Pac-Man World 20th Anniversary. So sit down, relax, grab yourself some popcorn and your carbonated drinks and enjoy your journey throughout 1999 for Pac-Man World 20th Anniversary. With it being a well-known arcade back in 1980s, developed and published by Namco for Japan Arcades and later published by Midway for their US Arcades, where you play as this yellow circle character named Pac-Man, collecting all of the dots while avoiding the ghosts named Blinky, Pinky, Inky and Clyde. Clyde? That's the most original basic name for the fourth orange ghost! Why not just give him Dinky, Jinky, Tinky, or bloody hell, even Sinky? But then again, Sue was the fourth name for the fourth go, so I can't really much talk. Which everyone back in the days will huddle up to this arcade cabinet at any arcades, put it in their tokens or quarters to set up their high scores to become the kings of Pac-Man. Which still carries on to this day, people are still trying to set new high scores to become the new king of Pac-Man. After 1995 came around with the new console PS1 being the new generation of consoles and comes 1999 was the upcoming 20th anniversary with a branch developer Namco Home Tech and published by Namco by the designer Scott Rogers and music composer by Tony Tallarico and directed by Bill Anderson from Namco Home Tech comes Pac-Man World being the final name for the game. Back in 1997 it went by a different project name, Pac-Man Ghost Zone, with it being planned to be released at the same year, with the game story plot being a teenager being sucked into the arcade cabinet by the ghost and their leader Ghost Lord. Why name him Ghost Lord? Why not change it to the Lord of Ghosts? I think that would be a better <laughs> better name for him. Anyway, going back to where I was going to, with the teenager changing into Pac-Man in 3D. With Anderson Recall not able to render 3D models for characters, well, I can't blame you not to worry about that Anderson, you're not the only one that can make 3D models. After several attempts with Anderson, Rogers and Tallarico, they sent the prototype to Namco and was not approved and cancelled due to quality reasons. Which leads to firing almost the entire development team aside from Rogers, an artist and a programmer. Which leads to Namco to push the release date to 1998 to allow the game to be reworked on the new game engine. Which leads to 1999 where Pac-Man is born. Though Pac-Man made its way to the 3D world for the PlayStation 1, Pac-Man wasn't given a voice due to Namco and unable to decide what voice Pac-Man should have for his, jump, uh, for his jump on the PS1. Some decided that he should sound like an adult. You're kidding me, right? How can you take him seriously when he has an adorable face like that to look at? In the end, they decided to save the money to leave him speechless. 
which I say that would be a very good idea. With the amount of time and effort they put in to work on this game, they released the game on the PS1 on October and November in 1999 for the USA and Japan PS1, while the PAL version got the game on February 2000, hitting its actual 20th anniversary for the Yellow Hero. Now, before I get into the story, if you ladies and gentlemen haven't played this game but would not like to play it somewhere along the line, then, uh, then I suggest skipping to this timeline here before I go on. I'll give you 5 seconds. Right, can't say I didn't warn ya. With it being the 20th anniversary for Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man and friends decide to host an anniversary birthday for Pac-Man before Pac-Man returns home from his adventure. But during Pac-Man being gone for a while, Miss Pac-Man and friends have been kidnapped by a variety of characters, with the dog being dragged into the hole from the mummy. Oh, poor doggo. Why? Why drag the doggo through the hole? Baby, uh, baby Pac-Man and a Dig Dug cameo getting anchored by a pirate ship and clowns. Ouch. You okay there, bud? Grandpa Pac-Man getting abducted by aliens. Child Pac-Man with a robot. Oh, this is so adorable. What the hell? Whoa, enjoy your compressed ride. And Miss Pac-Man being taken away from the ghosts Blinky, Pinky, Inky and Clyde. By the time Pac-Man made his way back home expecting a warm welcome party but ends up seeing the house in ruins. After looking around the house for the damages, yeah, looks like the amount of dots you've collected won't be able to cover the house, my good sir. An invitation to the ghost island lands on Pac-Man's face, saying it's a party for Tokman. Shaking his fists in anger, takes a bow to reach Ghost Island to save his friends while on his way to Ghost Island. One of the ghosts spotted Pac-Man and made a dash to Tokman to tell the real, uh, wait. Uh, what did that ghost say? Badly, I might add, to impersonate you, who is clearly the real Pac-Man. Uh, what he said. After realizing that they captured Miss Pac-Man and, as a misunderstanding, being the actual Pac-Man, how? How is that possible? How can you mix up the two? One wears a one is wearing a bow tie, and the other one doesn't. Well, ghosts are dumb sometimes. Anyway. After realizing the real Pac-Man is coming, Tokman sent out his lackeys to destroy Pac-Man. Well, going a little bit dark side there, are we, Tokman? Pac-Man journey through different locations of Ghost Island, from the Sea Buccaneer Pirate Island, the inner catacombs of the hidden tomb in the Mummy Mummy Pyramids, to the future and outer space of the Space Ages, circus tents with clowns in the circus funhouse. The mechanical with some flooding issues and one annoying level in Machine Mayhem. After saving your friends from those five level themes, uh, five level theme, Pac-Man makes his way to the graveyard to save Miss Pac-Man and to reach Tokman. After a good battle with Pac-Man versus Tokman, Tokman malfunction and open up to reveal who's Tokman in this Tokman is. Just an envious ghost being sad that he can't live like a ghost but wants it to be like Pac-Man. Oh, don't worry little ghost, Pac-Man will be happy to take you in and live a life like a Pac-Man, eating fruits, collecting dots, and eating a power dot. <laughs> Wait, what are you doing Pac-Man? <laughs> Oh, you merciless bastard! No wonder why Blinky, Pinky, Inky, and Clyde are coming for you in future series. Cause you straight up chomped the poor ghost. Hope you sleep well after the ghost hit you with several with several baseball bats. Oh wow! Why the heck did I write that up? That is some dark shit that I wrote. Anyway. After dealing with the ghost, Pac-Man goes back home with his friends and family and enjoys the party.
Uh, with it transitioning to 2D Maze Arcade to being a 3D platformer game, Pac-Man have to travel throughout six worlds as I explain in the story. Pirate, Temple, Space, Funhouse, Factory and the Mansion, saving his friends with hidden keys which I'll go into more details about that later. Going through four levels or three for the temple where you get from start to finish from each stage and every end level per each world ends on the boss to take out. With some bosses being easy like the HMS Windbag, yes I know, a funny name but oh well. A cameo of Namco well known arcade Galaga in the Space Age, which I gotta say, it's an awesome touch. To the annoying bosses like the Sphinx head in the temple and the robot in the factory. And the Clown Grand Prix, well, not much of a challenge. To Talk Man, which I'll explain later. Like the original Pac Man dots, power dots and fruits are in this game to collect. With the power dots acting like power ups to get rid of the ghosts like the original, but in the in this game, whenever and whenever in any level, when you clean up all of the ghosts, you get yourself an extra health bar restored. Yes, Pac-Man is rocking the health bar in this game. Unlike the arcade when the ghosts touch him once and he goes. Instead, he has a hitbox of four. And when he is on his last hit, you lose a life. Another way of gaining health or gaining life is looking out for these yellow shapes where white outline gives you one piece of health, but the red outline restores you to full health. And to gain a life, you can find these transparent Pac-Man shapes that will give you an extra chance. Now, about the dots and fruits. They can be collected to total up your points up there, up there on the screen, but they also have another purpose. With the dots, you can actually use them as weapons to take out the enemies, except the ghosts, of course. Using the dots as weapons will consume the dots you've collected. One dots for a normal shot and 10 dots for an area of effect shot. As for fruits, well, you see this door there? Yeah, those doors. Those fruits have purpose to open those doors to get some secrets secret goodies, but also aid you on your journey through each level. Except one level. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses, we'll get there in a second. Ah, fine. With new items to collect and use, we got our metal cover that allows Pac-Man to walk underwater and able to walk through steam and walk over lava carts but still can take a hit from enemies and get it magnetized at the factory. Hmm, not so invincible Pac-Man after all. A glowing object that allows Pac-Man to do an area of effect or a screen nuke butt pound to make to take out enemies around him. The letters to spell out Pac-Man, P-A-C-M-A-N, will allow you to go to the bonus stage, but those letters can be well hidden either by boxes, switches, or hidden by doors or hard to reach areas. That makes you look for a switch to access the area that Pac-Man couldn't get there before. Now, there's one more door that I've left out. Yes, the maze door. Now this particular key, the Galligan symbol, is found in each stage, or twice for the tomb. Now, whenever you found that Galligan symbol, you can go back to that door and enjoy the old school Pac-Man going through the maze to collect the required amount of dots and also to collect fruits to actually total up your score. Best put the camera in a sky view cause Christ of money can you have it close enough that I cannot see a damn thing coming after me. Oh god damn, there goes most of my lives I've collected. Which unlocking the maze and completing it will give you a marathon in the maze section going through all the mazes you've played in the adventure mode. And now the actual key. These keys are a rare item to find. Once you collect the key, it carries over from different stages to find your friends and to save them, which is mandatory to reach the mansion and also to fight Tokmen. There's about six keys in total to find and six Friends, uh, six friends to save. There's one problem I've came across that will make you rage and to exit out the stage and reset the whole process of the level. If you end up finding the key, you must collect it once you see it. But if you end up 
dying and collected a certain checkpoint from a different area of the stage well guess what you best hit that pause and reset the stage cause that key that you found before is no longer there and it's a total pain in the ass to start again as for the level designs and end bosses the level are somewhat linear with its exploration with some levels like the pirate funhouse and most of the factory and mansions but there's some level that really overstays their welcome and i mean really overstay their welcome with their exploration to find certain objects like the key or a certain fruit to move forward to the end of each stage which leads me to one particular level that i really loathe with its exploration down the tubes <laughs> yeah i'll shove you down the tubes once i'm done with you though yes it's platform from the half of the level which is fine but when it comes to the water section you got kid pac-man there indicating that there's a key to be found in this level but the end stage is just an easy swim to the right to get there but since you need all five characters to to be saved before going to the mansion to save miss pac-man you got no choice but to go find the key which leads to a bloody treasure hunt with using the metal ball item to get uh, to get to the underwater boxes and butt pound it and go into different locations of this stage and repeat the process until you find a certain fruit to open the door that is near kid pac-man butt pound that switch that shows the key over the pit if you jump incorrectly you lose a life getting captured by the ghost you lose a life or a certain debris dropped on your head if you guess you lose a life then and you get a cookie. Oh, God damn, I really, really loathe this level with the backtracking to get a certain fruit to open this goddamn door. Ugh. As for the boss levels, well, there's a mixed bag of challenges to it. With the wind bag being like a boulder run but on the side, jumping over <laughs> over barrels and dangerous pits till you reach to the tower, using your bat pound to bring up targets that can bounce the cannonball back, acting like a ping pong ping pong match. The Sphinx head at the turn, with the first half just running away from the mummy to the exit that leads to the battle of the Sphinx head. And there's only four hearts and four fans device to run on to open the hands which it does get a bit of which it does get a bit repetitive especially with new obstacles that gets thrown in the spaceship battle oh now that was an awesome one to have a bit of challenge with it being a cameo of galaga absolutely awesome as hell as for the boss here it here it becomes a challenge when it comes to shooting all four eyes out and being careful not to get sucked in and well chewed out chewed up and spat out clown grand prix where's the challenge here nope no challenge here at all well that's a waste the robot battle right this boss takes the longest one to deal with not only you have to get the steel ball to avoid self damaging with a butt pounding on the hot switch then you got the magnet crane that will magnetize you if you're right underneath it and will drop you into an acid pool or whatever it is but not only you have to wait for the wooden crate to drop in so you can butt pound to get that steel ball and you have to do it that eight times god damn it now the final boss top man with with it taking a three phase barrel with the use of dots butt pound and speed roll with him taking a total of 15 health points phase one and phase two are all right but my god phase three is is the one that killed me the most by sending me flying off the ring about five times or more give or take a few my god talk man can you fight fair oh wait end bosses don't fight fair well that logic went out the window with the gameplay overall it's a bit of a mixed bag with it being fun and awesome if you want to get to point a to point b but a total pain in the neck to finish the game completely by collecting the keys to release your friends to reach the mansion world best have patience and knowledge of every level to get all the dots fruits and key to save pac-man's friends and to finish off talk man after finishing the adventure you got the maze and the classic where you can play all of the mazes also do the marathon of all mazes like the classics speaking of classics you can play the original 2d pac-man to relive the awesome childhood memories of the arcades <laughs> Oh, 
looking at the transitioning from 2D to 3D of this game, the graphic does look amazing and sets the theme. Uh, well, most of them, yes. I'm talking about the U Funhouse with Pirate with Pirate World with the nice yellow sand, nice dark color palettes for the platform and the rooftops, light color for the cannon lid, and nice blue sky with some clouds to make it look lively. To the temples with awesome animation and particles for the waterfall, dark corridors with an area of effect light to give the vibe to watch your steps for traps they could kill our poor poor pac-man nice lively spaceship car palettes with an awesome space background and awesome particle animations of lasers in space fun color design with it feeling like you're part of the circus in the fun house awesome industrial theme with good pulsing animation of the hot pipes in the machine haunting themes with well designed gravestone coffins and underground catacombs with green ooze at the mansion though the level got good themes there's some levels that are a bit of a hit or miss where some levels can work with good uh, with good colors and images, some of them tend to clash colors that can hurt the eyes at some point. As of the character's design, each character looks unique, like the enemies that goes in theme with each well, like the skeleton, parrots, and cannons in the pirate theme, to the industrial area with walking tools and the mansion with walking gravestones and skeletons with top hats. And the ghosts in every well, they will always wear different outfits, like pirate hats, space helmets, clown makeups, or hard hats, they look adorable. But the main man himself, Pac-Man, looks very cheerful and vibrant. Just looking at him, he looks like an awesome person that is willing to give you a hug. Well, if he doesn't eat you like this ghost here. <laughs> but also his attire, sporting him with orange gloves and red boots that being carried over throughout the Pac-Man World series and the Super Smash Bros, which is a pretty neat touch to it. For the controls, now since Pac-Man transitioning from 2D to 3D, a lovable yellow ball of joy got some new move sets. Starting off with the directional pad or analog stick to move Pac-Man, the X button to jump and hitting the X button again while in mid-flight to do the butt pound. The butt pound can be used to squish enemies or to use the trampoline to get to higher places. The circle button to use your dots as weapons. As much as I love the concept of using it against the enemies, good on paper but but as for execution on the game, not so much. Since Pac-Man is more likely dunking his dots than throwing it to the actual enemies. But the dots are more useful against these industrial tools in the machine area and against Tuckman, so the dots are not that useless. <laughs> Other than that, a good butt pound will be my go-to to squish enemies. The square button. It, the square button is used to start up a dash animation. But once you start holding on to the button, after releasing the button, you will do a dash roll at whatever direction Pac-Man is facing. Very helpful to get from big gaps. Dash rolling towards a ramp, but also used to use these treadmill machines. To open up gates or doors or fly across certain gaps. While the X, while in water, the X button is to ascend and the triangle button is to descend. Now the controls overall, I feel like the controls is a bit, um, uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Ah yes, janked or tanked. No, not tanked as in tank controls, as in sometimes the controls will respond and sometimes it won't. And my word, the farmhouse house with its spinning platform, it does not help me at all. Which forces me to use the butt pound constantly to avoid spinning around. Though yes, it's the main action of movement, I shouldn't be doing this constantly to save the life of me. But my word, when it comes to spinning the treadmills, the problem with this is whenever he is, whenever he is still in his dash animation, his jumping is cut in half to a small jump, which becomes an issue with the temple boss. Since you have, an op since you have to open the chest with using the four treadmill, the section is easy. The first section is easy, but Doing it three more times and adding different obstacles in the misc, it becomes a sudden nightmare. Since you have to stop at the middle of, it, of the treadmill, start up the dash animation till the chest opens up a bit, 
stop dash, then jump to the next one. Oh, ho, ho, wait! You got a tornado coming at you. Well, guess what? Stop dashing, then jump. Don't jump while dashing, otherwise you'll get caught by the tornado or the other obstacle or falling into the pits, which it's... Uh, yeah, I think you can guess the idea of where I'm going. I do not like this boss. If the controllers was polished to a T, <laughs> I, would have, I would have loved it even more. But then again, it's not that bad, but it's not that good either. So, so be prepared for the amount of unaccounted deaths that will be happening towards you. Now, the soundtrack. The soundtrack is somewhat forgetful, but it does very well to stick in theme for each world. With the nice sea shanty music in the pirate world, a soft mysterious tune in the tomb world, to the awesome out of space music. Almost like Star Trek in the space age, the carnival feel in the funhouse, to the industrial rock with awesome guitar and bass in the industrial world, to creepy crawling beats with some nice piano piece in, the, in there in the mansion. Just have a listen to these soundtracks and tell me what you think. people will say about it but I think the music will be something to listen whenever I'm working on some projects. Looking at this game it does look like a good game but it could have been great or let alone awesome. If they polished up the control of not being jank or tanked since the amount of unaccounted deaths that I had happened to me, yeah, that, which requires me to constantly using butt pound to make my way across dangerous drops, pits, or traps, but also the boss putting up more of a challenge. Though the Gallagher boss and Talkman does put up more of a challenge, but with the constant button mashing on the Gallagher boss, could do a number on your thumbs or fingers with rapid, pre uh, rapid pressing on the buttons to shoot out your four eyes of the boss. And Tuckman final phase being a pain that requires to butt, pounds, uh, butt bounce right at the moment he starts spinning up. But the knockback of his hit is ridiculous as hell. Though I cannot deny the fact, yes it can be a fun game to play to relive childhood memories with good level design and a good soundtrack to listen to with good graphics and animation to make each world look unique but also lively as well with great enemy design per world and of course pac-man design just looking at him you cannot deny the fact that you just want to give him give him a hug so in overall i'm giving pac-man world 20th anniversary a three out of five power pellets. I really want to love this game. I do, but I also don't hate the game either. Since it was a first crack attempt of transitioning from 2D to 3D, so I can't give it too much grief. But the challenging factor is not great, but good, which leads me not giving the highest score. But without a doubt, it would be it would be something to collect for the mascot platform collection and to play with friends and family and enjoy the journey of Pac-Man. Oh look, a power pellet. Wait, what are you doing Pac-Man? Oh shit! Thank you for watching Pac-Man World Review, my fellow time travellers, and thank you for being part of the time traveller's journey. If you enjoyed the journey, feel free to hit the like button and put the comments down below of what you think of the game and also get your personal experience with it. Ah, but if you're new to time travelling and want to see more, then feel free to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can keep up to date of where and when I could be traveling to next time for another episode of Planetary's Throwback. But until then, this is Planetary sign off and hopefully you enjoy your time traveling journey one game at a time.
Ta-ta!